Jitomate is the native Mexican word for fat water because the tomato is plump and juicy. <laughs> Welcome back to M's Adventures in Storytelling. The podcast is taking a little bit of a turn to an audiobook as I stack up and plan interviews with different people and find time to edit the podcast stories. In the meantime, I have written a new book called Zest Quest about my travels over the last 12 years in search of interesting fruit with my fruit fanatic friend. And as a way to proofread it, I read it as an audiobook. So this is a little clip of the book. Enjoy. This book is called Zest Quest Prologue Prologue The joy of travel and adventure is the company one keeps, who you share the experience with. Prologue The joy of travel and adventure is the company one keeps, who you share the experience with. For many of my travels, I have had the company of a fruit fanatic. She prefers to call herself a fruitologist or berryologist. Whatever the name, many of our adventures have involved fruit. Even when I'm not traveling with the fruity one, in her stead, I feel compelled to try unusual fruits and think about fruit than more than is probably necessary. This book is a collection and as always with a bit of history and trivia about fruit I've tried in Bangladesh, Colombia, Trinidad, Jordan, India, Peru, USA, Denmark, Italy, Vietnam, Cambodia, China, and some other places I can't recall. I'll mention my favorite fruit and the worst fruit that I have yet to try. And no, it's not durian. On social media, I follow some of the exotic fruit hashtags, and what is exotic to one person is normal to another. I recommend the documentary Fear No Fruit, and you will learn that no new fruit was introduced into the U.S. from 1872 to 1960, or some such an astonishing factoid. This writ this book is written for my fruity fruitologist and berryologist. I look forward to our next fruity adventure. December 2021. I divided the book up into about 20 chapters. They're called Tired of Chewing, Dragon Eye and Snot. The Queen of Fruit, a funny feeling in the pit of your stomach, tenderizer and firm flesh, Berryology. ice cream bean was the food of the gods, cucumber melon, caramel fruit, smelliest fruit in the world, durian, styrofoam and cheese, worst fruit in the world. Foreigner fruit, all fruit menu, pineapple chow and the food of the immortals, zest rest, resources and about the author. First chapter, tired of chewing, lulo, citrus, star fruit and the most popular fruits. Why fruit? My, f my quest for fruit is real but also metaphorical. It is about a passion. It's about passion, a zest for life. That said, when I told one of my colleagues about my quest to try 100 new types of fruit, he told me that he had written a scholarly paper on fruit. 
with the weary look of a man who has chewed his way through hundreds of bushels of fruit, he said to me, Get a juicer. You will get tired of all that chewing. A note about juice. The word for fresh juice is the same in English, but in other languages it can be much more evocative or zaftig. In some language, in some languages, there is a different word for freshly squeezed juice. In Spanish, jugo is juice and zumo is often used for freshly squeezed juice. In Italian, succo is the word for juice, but spremute is the word for freshly but more like a yellowy eyeball. This fruit is also called genep or henep. This book is set up in textural families, chapters, based on what the fruit tastes and look like, not the scientific family, which I don't know. Most of these fruits can be unusual or exotic to some. That's sort of the point of this book. Also, just a chance to nerd out about fruit. Indeed, some fruit, like the cacao tree, thrive in families but not necessarily with other members of the same family. When I moved to Colombia, I set a goal to try a hundred new, to me, fruits. Lulo. The lulo fruit is unique to this part of the world. It grows in Ecuador and Peru as well. The Colombians have really made it part of their daily juice selection. Fresh juice is a part of daily life here. The lulo looks like a tomato or persimmon, but it is super sour, so only used for juice. I did touch my tongue to one when I bought it, but the sourness made me crinkle my face and dance around in an attempt to fling the sourness off me. Perhaps due to the acidity, lulo is used for ceviche. However, the ceviche in Bogota was sort of like a fruit shrimp soup, often served in a tall glass or sundae glass, making it more like a spacho. The juice of the lulo is greenish in color, even though the fruit is orange. I don't know how that happens. The tree tomato. I tried three different kinds of tree tomato in Colombia. They don't have that much flavor and look like oval tomatoes. I guess it is all about the texture. I could see that these would be good for salads. They have the texture of a tomato and the firmness of their flesh means that they hold together. The skin is edible just like with a non-tree tomato. I was pleased to hear that in Mexican Spanish, a normal red tomato is a jitomate, so that the other kinds of tomatoes can also be called tomato. Jitomate is the native Mexican word for fat water, because the tomato is plump and juicy. The tree tomato is less watery than the red tomato, maybe that's why it's less popular. The tomato is the most consumed vegetable, I put that in quotes, in the world. 177 million metric tons of it every year are consumed. Tomatoes are also the most popular fruit in the world, since they're actually a fruit. Number two in popular fruits is the banana. Bananas are the second most consumed fruit in the world. In Peru, there were Platano de la Isla, which is what they call the sweet banana, as opposed to the plantain type of banana. A seda, or silk banana, is like the Cavendish banana in the U.S. There's really only one type of banana in the U.S. Then, number three, watermelons. Number four, apples. Number five, grapes. Number six, oranges. Number seven, mangoes and guavas. 
number eight plantains which I really like a banana number nine tangerines and mandarins and clementines number ten pineapples number eleven melons number twelve peaches and nectarines number thirteen pears number fourteen lemons and limes number fifteen papayas number sixteen plums and sloes number seventeen grapefruits number eighteen dates number nineteen strawberries number twenty avocados and number twenty one persimmons this is per tonnage can you imagine the number per item or per volume this brings us to citrus my fruit fanatic friend loves citrus therefore I have tried many types of citrus I start by mentioning the kumquat mainly because I can't see how one could like it it looks like a grape sized orange supposedly you can eat it rind and all I find it very bitter these are popular for some reason but I can only imagine that must be due to their kawaii the Japanese term for their culture of cuteness factor the kawaii factor kumquats are apparently one of those closest modern versions of the original citrus fruit there are various kinds including a greenish colored one the interesting thing about kumquats which comes from the Chinese for golden mandarin orange is that there is some controversy over citrus taxonomy if you wish to geek out about this I recommend Wikipedia's page they even have graphs that show the relationship between the various types of citrus according to scholars the original types of citrus were the mandarin the pomelo the cedron or citron and the papeta all other types are blends or cultivars of those three slash four the cultivation for certain traits has has been going on for at least four thousand years there are hundreds of different types of citrus here is a list of some that you may or may not have heard of and now on my list of to try amansus amansus sweet summer in Japanese and look a bit like a standard orange or mandarin blood oranges dark red inside from the antioxidants that create the blue and blue fruits Buddha's hand like an octopus or flower made of all rind and pith no juice used mainly for aromatics calamondins a mix of the mandarin and kumquats caracaras mutated in Venezuela they are red inside and have a citrus and berry flavor chinotto or quinotto in Italian gives the bitter to Campari and Brio an Italian soda etrogs related to the citron with distinct ridges in the peel native to India and Israel it is one of the four plants used in the Jewish holiday of Sukkot the others are palm fronds myrtle and willow twigs according to some this is the original fruit from the Garden of Eden others say that the fruit was a pomegranate the pomegranate is also supposedly the fruit that Persephone ate six of when well six seeds when she was kidnapped by the god of the underworld her release to her mother the earth led to summer and the six seeds she ate mark the six months she spends in the underworld finger limes these are longer limes shaped a bit like a pear well let's say they're shaped more like a small cucumber also used for citrus caviar or like a finger since that's what they're called Hig Hig from the Miyazaki region of Japan developed 200 years ago they are pale yellow with a mild taste key limes smile <laughs> smile 
Key lime, small limes primarily used for pie, as in key lime pie. Despite being tiny, they were created by crossing a citron with a papeta, both of which are quite large. Kefir limes has an intense aroma and often the rind and leaves are used for flavoring. Kabosu from the Osa region of Japan tastes a bit like a yuzu, apparently. Kinos developed in Pakistan in the 1030s, juicier and sweeter than the mandarin, but harder to peel. Kiyomis from Japan seedless and with the lowest acidity in a citrus fruit. Meyer lemons, a bit orange like an orange, but a lemon, just sweeter. Mineola orange or tangelo, also known as the honey bell because of the shape. This is a cross between a grapefruit and a tangerine, named after the place where they made them in 1931. A fun fact, in 2011, it is assumed that the Mineola mutated, mutated to become even sweeter. This discovery was due to the sighting of baboons in Cape Town, South Africa, who were attracted to the higher levels of sweetness in one particular tree. The BRIX, the B-R-I-X, or sweetness grade, of the fruit from this tree was higher than in the rest of the orchard. The farmers are now cultivating this new cultivar for sale. The new cultivar is not only sweeter, but also has an earlier and longer ripening season. The new cultivar is called the Svartle Late Valencia. I think it should be called the Baboon. But no one asked me. Persian limes, a mix between lemons and limes. Naval oranges. Naval oranges. They are called this because there is an inner orange inside that looks like a human navel. Papetas. Extremely bitter with a dimpled and bumpy green rind. Used for their aroma and extreme bitterness. Pomelo. They are large with a thick rind, ripe when green, and have a sweet orange taste with notes of lychee or lychee. Pomelo, they are large with a thick rind, ripe when green, and have a sweet orange taste with notes of lychee. Rangpurs or Rangpur limes, the flesh is bright orange. They have a lime and slightly musky smoked flavor. Seville oranges, bitter oranges from Seville or Sevilla, given as gifts in Tudor times, and so the tradition continues 500 years later. Satsuma, tangerines, like a mandarin, but even closer to, oh, like a mandarin, but even easier to peel. Tangerines are probably named after Tangier in Morocco. Tangelo, a mix between a tangerine and a pomelo, the ugly fruit or oogly fruit from Thrive Cuisine. Once upon a time on the beautiful island of Jamaica, a half orange, half tangerine tree fell in love with a grapefruit tree and they made really ugly babies. Oogly or ugly fruits, so named because they're startlingly unattractive, taste like sweet grapefruits. They're much more delicious than they look, and they are well worth trying. They look like a wrinkled celluloid-ridden yellow-orange in the shape of a pear. Ugly fruit is a Jamaican tangelo, a mix of tangerine and a pomelo. U-G-L-I, or ugly or oogly, is actually a registered trademark name from the Cabell Hall Citrus Limited Company. They wanted to play on the ugliness of the fruit's appearance. Yuzus, round and small, with a taste like grapefruit and lemon, just with more aroma.
Back to the citrus I tried in Colombia. Orange. I have tried oranges before, but not this kind. Where I grew up, oranges were orange on the outside when ripe. The oranges used in Colombia are often green on the outside and orange on the inside and sweet. These are often differentiated by usage. These may be for juice and so their appearance is less important. The origin of the name, orange, is from Sanskrit for orange tree, naranja or naranga. In many languages, oranges are called by their origin. So apple from China, for example, in Swedish is from the apelsen in German, which is apfelsine, which is apfel plus sine. So apple plus China. In some countries, the Portuguese introduced the orange, and therefore the name of the fruit is called a portogallo, or a variation on that. The most obvious is in Puerto Rican Spanish, where the orange is called a china. The mandarin is named so because explorers encountered them in China, where a mandarin was a government official although they originated in India. The Clementine is a Mandarin hybrid named after a missionary who discovered them in Algeria, Clement Rodier. They're seedless. Another thing I find interesting about the word orange is that until 500 years ago, it was not used to describe a color. It was only used for the fruit. Things that were orange were described as red as in redhead. So one would have to say, see ye old red apple, the one that is the color of an orange, and I thank thee. Although apparently anyone who could read back then knew that the Y in ye was a shorthand for us, and that one would still say the, even when it was spelled Y-E. Just a, wor a bit of word nerding. Mandarin. I mention these because the juice is great. Most of the mandarins I tried in Colombia were in juice form. When I would go to my favorite market, Palacamao, the vendors would often give me a free mandarin. I appreciate the freebie, but really I don't like the mandarins because they are too papery and fibrous, but great as juice, and so incredibly orange colored. If one, not, if one cannot find a citrus fruit, there are other sour fruits to use. The carambola, star fruit, is one of them. You can you may have you have seen them on many a cocktail, I assume. I did not find one hundred fruits to try, and many of the new fruits were variations of other fruits. I will come up, cover some of the other fruits I tried in Colombia in later chapters of this book. Frankly, a lot of the fruits I tried in Colombia were not very tasty and had to be boiled with sugar for 24 hours to be edible. Stick with pitaya, lulo, and mangostino. Actually, the rarest fruit to find in Colombia are lemons. Another thing about citrus, primarily lemons, is that it works as an excellent cleaning product. If you live in a place like Rome where the water is hard and lots of limescale builds up on your glasses, you can use lemon juice, which is citric acid, to clean them. You can also use vinegar, but lemon has a nicer smell. Leech lime is another name for kefir lime. So called because rubbing lime juice onto the legs and socks prevents leech bites. British soldiers were called limeys because they ate so many limes to prevent scurvy. In Italy, I continued my fruit tasting. In Italy, there are a lot of lemons. Rarely any limes, so the complete opposite of Peru and Colombia. In many places, there are exotic fruits. Not so much in Italy. But the Sorrento lemon was new to me. It's big and pithy. 
The rind can be consumed and it does not have a strong taste. The rind is mostly used for candied fruit. The taste of the Sorrento lemon is much like a normal lemon. What is strange is biting into it like one would an apple. The Campania lemon is rounder with a thick with a thick orangish rind. It has a strong aroma but is not as tasty as the Sorrento lemon. Sorrento is in Campania, so technically it's also lemon from Campania, but it's the equivalent of champagne or sparkling wine. The citrus family is called Hesperidiums, which I think would be a good name for a character, Dr. Hesperidiums. Am I right? I hope you enjoyed this little foray into citrus fruit and some of my adventures with my fruity friend. There'll be more next time, or maybe next time I will have a little clip about uh, from a car ride, a road trip, where I was chatting with some friends about this and that. Thanks for listening. Ciao for now.